happening? All right, guys. Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined as always by Tyler and Lou. Big episode today. We're going to get into a couple different points, talking Pokemon, National Treasures, the brand, as well as our first topic today, which is going to be we saw Panini released the basketball release schedule for 2020 slash 2021 basketball products. So the upcoming draft class with Anthony Edwards, LaMelo Ball, uh, James Wiseman, guys like that. So before we get into that, I do want to start the show by giving props to Tyler. So we talked a couple weeks ago about the MVP race and Lou and I were very quick last week to shit on Tyler for his MVP performance. He got a lot of credit after Tannehill threw four touchdowns a couple weeks ago with like 190 yards, but comes out this week and slings it around, puts up some incredible numbers. We see these articles on Twitter about is Tannehill an MVP contender once Tyler did not release. And I just, I mean, it may or may not happen, but so far I I just, I got to give Tyler some credit because I laughed when it happened. It was comical and I was like, it didn't make any sense. And uh, the fact that it's even a discussion at this, at any point in the season to me is, is a, is a huge up to Tyler. So for those watching or not watching, Tyler is pulling it up on Instagram to show the, the post on IG. But Tyler, pr- props to you for that at a left field pick for, for MVP. I'll accept it. I'll keep it moving. We're, we're, we're five or six weeks in. You know, I think we're on a seesaw of Tyler here of Ryan Tannehill emotions. So we'll just we'll just keep it moving. But Lou, you you look like you got something to say. I have nothing to say. I respect Tyler very much. I don't love the fact that at Car Talk Pod on Instagram has become the Tyler Schmidt propaganda account, but that's all that that's all I've got on that one. And we're going to keep it moving. Like Tyler said, it's early. I respect Tyler for his outrageous prediction that is outrageous. And but if you look can, at their schedule for the next six to eight weeks. Yeah. Like I said to you, if you want to make the bet, I will hold the odds for you. But no, you won't. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep it moving. We'll keep moving. Yeah, on and Car Talk Pod is propaganda. Let's keep going. All right. So let's get into the the first topic of the day. Uh, Industry Summit is going on this week. It's uh, completely digital it's for car shops, breakers, other uh, people in the industry, but it's being held uh, virtually. And <clears throat> we saw that the release schedule for 2020 2021 NBA basketball had. Uh, Right, real quick, real quick. Can we just go in depth a little bit more on Industry Summit? Who puts that on? What what is that? Um, I have very little knowledge about it. I was actually invited. You attend to, it. It's typically something. Again, I didn't go last year, so last year was the first year I knew about it. Um, I think last year I would have to look into this. It's typically something like you can go and like it's in person. And there's a bunch of like Panini's there. All the big players in the, in the card game are there, right? So Leaf, Panini, Tops, Upper Deck, Beckett, like a lot of those companies go. And then there's like uh, individual meetings with or like uh, individual events that like card shops and breakers and all of these people put on for you to go and like learn and talk about different discussions. It would be no different than a, a you know, a, a big about, is it for distributors like what kind of event is it is it a private event yeah that's or that, are we still again, learning more I, about I, it? honestly i don't know um like i said this was the second year i've been invited to it but since it was all virtual um did you I, tune in mm-mm, not today got it no mondays again mondays we record this on monday but mondays are our busiest day and i i didn't get a chance to, to tune in today so again right. i don't know i'm not well, certainly the expert on that but what we were saying though um, was yeah Panini uh, NBA. Panini NBA. So right, basketball uh, release schedule got released, and first products they've got on there for the next season. Uh, it's got hoops, January thirteenth, certified. Where I'm not going to give all the dates, but certified. Donruss Revolution, absolute, the big one, first big one, Prism, March third. So just to give some perspective for those that are newer and don't know, Prism obviously being the bigger brand, the biggest brand in, in basketball last year was like the first week of December. I think the official date was December 6th or 7th. So 1920 with Zion came out the first week of December. So this is obviously a 
a, a, a huge turn of events or a huge shift because this is typically something out at the end of December and now we're looking at March. Yeah, I think part of the thing they're playing with is they don't know when the season's going to come back, right? Sure, so that's one sure. thing they're playing with. Yeah, absolutely. And then the big, I think, yeah, the biggest change, I feel like, is Prism not coming out until March. That's a pretty big shift. Yep. So then you've got uh, other things on here. You've got Donner's Optic, Crown Royal, Impeccable, Select, another popular product, comes out May 12th. Uh, Noir, Court Kings, National Treasures is June 16th. And then Mosaic is set for 630 and I know, Lou, you had some thoughts on this list when you first saw it. What, uh, what was on your mind? Uh, the first thing that came across my mind was the Prism in March. The second thing that came across my mind was no Chronicles on this list. Uh, I'm not sure. You know, of course, they could just end up adding it, right? Like they did this year. Um, but I thought it was interesting that coming out of the success of Chronicles uh, this year, that they weren't going to run that back again. Uh, my other thought was that it's a lot, lot of releases. So the uh retail buy and flip game doesn't feel as viable off the rip at the moment yeah something to think about also like you mentioned about prism in december is kind of this notion of you know christmas and the holiday season and and releases going into that i mean christmas day has always been an amazing nba day obviously this bubble was huge and all that went in there. Um, but we're now going into the meat of October. No, we'll, we'll go November, December. You know, we're, we're talking about mid January before we see some basketball again. Um, and we're going to go through the holiday season with, I don't believe unless there's some last minute product from last year, any, any real basketball releases. There's a lot coming up a lot uh, from, this 1920 lots. What do we got? You still got you still got flawless basketball. Okay. You have hoops premium. You have in case coming out this week, which we'll get to later. You have one and one basketball, and mm-hmm. th- that's what I want to get into. In the next point is a lot of these products aren't on this list. You have immaculate. You have um. There's another one. Um. Clearly Donner's basketball. Mm-hmm. So you still got six or seven releases for 1920 that we have yet to see at, in this at this point. Yeah. Well, then if you think about that for this year, are they going to discontinue something for next year? I mean, there's 16 and that was, products that was my on question. this list. Yeah. And that was my question because some of those products are, are, are big products. Flawless basketball is like the expensive, expensive briefcase basketball product, right? Like it's, mm-hmm. I think, pre selling for this year's class at 7,000 a box, 10 cards. So wow. that's not on the list. Immaculate basketball is not on the list. Encased basketball is not on the list. Um, Panini one and one, which is new this year, is not on the list. Like Lou said, Chronicles is not on the list. So, are those products going away? Or are they just? Is this just a temporary release? I, that's what I don't. That's what I don't know. Um, and a, a, again, something to keep in mind, like Lou Lou said, with Chronicles not being on there, I would love to know from some of my um, industry friends who went to this last year and could reference the last year's list if last year's list had everything on it or similar to this, if it only had some of them and they added them later, I'm, I'm not sure how that works. So it would be interesting to find out, but at, at the moment, is, is this just the official list? Uh, I'm not, not, not sure. Yeah. Apparently that came from the industry summit today. So I'm sure it's a work in pro like we were saying, it's a work in progress with the basketball schedule in general. And then I, th- you know, I think they could probably play it by ear, right? Like how hot, is this rookie class will probably determine if they put out other products. This, this to me has to be a temporary list. It just, it absolutely has to be. There's just no chance. They don't make flawless basketball. There's no chance. Yeah. There, it, it's just okay. not possible. There, this is like for now. Yeah. This has got to be for now. And I'm not saying they're going to add a million products, but there's just, I just can't see a world where there's no flawless basketball. That How do you is about Kings. I'm not a big fan of Core Kings. It, it's good for what it is. It's a break product, right? You open it up and there's seven or eight cards. There's not a ton of stuff in it. It's rookies inserts. I mean, it's it's got some cool chase cards. Like the level four rookies are, are pretty popular in there. Similar to like some of the other rare inserts, like courtside. It's obviously not nearly as popular as courtside, but the level fours, like the level one, right. level two, level three. As I'm sitting here and looking at this. And really, I'm um, thinking about 
the next 10 weeks, Mm -hmm. bringing us to the end of the year. I mean, prison football is going to be a huge product Mm -hmm. is, is what is crossing my mind. I mean, if you were saying NBA prism typically comes out Mm mid-December, I mean, knowing what that product has meant Mm -hmm. the last three consecutive years feels like prism football is a real shot at like just being a dominant force coming in. Yeah. I mean, with, with basketball not being on at that point, cause it comes out November 18th at the moment mm-hmm. and typically basketball would be pretty, uh, basketball starts right around there normally. Right. Yeah. So you're not going to have basketball. Baseball is going to be over and I don't think you're going to have hockey either. I mean, soccer will be going, but football is going to be the only sport on. We'll be right in the heart of the season you know, college football should be all conferences should be going. So it, it, yeah, it seems Tyler, like we're set up for a big football release. Uh, and big rookies are, I mean, obviously burrow. Yeah. I mean, again, so much of the football market is, 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 is through the quarterbacks. Yeah, so my- you've got burrow and you've got Herbert playing Tua took some of his Tua took snaps. Some snaps. Be careful. Yep. You've Might got, player. you've got, you know, Edwards Alaire, you got Swift having a big day. Dobbins went in when Ingram got hurt. So CD Lamb's playing well. Like you've got Judy. Like you've got a lot of skill players. Rugs. Yep, rugs. So like, yeah, I mean, Prism is the brand in basketball and it's it's become the brand in football. It's just this this is gonna be, I mean, pre pre-sale online for boxes is over a thousand dollars a box. It's it, it's a it's a big release. Love it. Um, but but Ty, before we go on, I yeah. know we wanted to talk about this. There was also other news that dropped today on Twitter about Upper Deck getting uh, golf carts, getting yeah. PGA licensing back, and that is supposed to start. What I understand is uh, is spring twenty twenty one. So they posted a picture with Tiger Woods, like a, it says legendary PGA Tour course relics autographs, one of five. It, it looks, looks awesome. like yeah. I'm trying to see what course that is, but. It's got some like encased sand, like he almost went up and down from the green side of five with an auto. We've got breaking news. Upper Deck announces PGA Tour licensed trading cards showcasing today's rising stars like Justin Thomas, Bryson DeChambeau, Danielle Kang, and Lexi Thompson alongside golf legends like Tiger Woods, Arnold Palmer, Annika Sorenstam, and many more. It feels like... The dra- this is like prime for the DraftKings, Daily Fantasy, Degenerate, Saturday, Transfusions on the Golf Course, Boys to Gamble. Feels like this could be prime for some pack wars. Notice they didn't mention Brooks Kepka. I wonder if he snuck in there because that would be a big product. But, I mean, if we're talking about Bryson, like on-card autos, I don't know if this is a sticker, this Tiger image that they show. Probably. I don't but know. It Tiger, feels I, I like a seen... Bryson a Bryson card could could get a little wild right now. I haven't seen a ton of Tiger Wood sticker stuff. I don't think, but yeah, I mean, I I think it'll do well strictly with Tiger Woods, right? I mean, most yeah. people like Tiger Woods. He's the you know one of the goats in golf. It just his stuff sells well. Beautiful signature. I just having Tiger Woods in this, it it, it seems like it would do pretty well. Yeah, especially because a lot of those guys you mentioned, Tyler, probably don't have cards. Yeah. Like they don't probably have any cards. No. And the, and the tour is littered with young studs that are just competing at the majors, making shit happen. So that, that'll be a fun little product. Yep. All right. Keep it moving. <clears throat> All right. So let's Lou, I'll let you take this next one, but uh, we're going to get into Pokemon. <clears throat> yeah. Pokemon. Uh, just want to talk about like thoughts on, how the weekend went. I'm not sure how close you guys were to it. I was keeping an eye on things pretty, pretty heavily. Cause I was trying to make some buys on some different on some different things. But I mean, the price, like we were talking about it last week. I think it was sort of what our thoughts last week were what's going to happen with the Pokemon market. Now. I think we saw the early effects of that, like the run on that uh, in terms of pricing, you know, just a couple ones. I know Charizard PSA eight first edition. September 30th, one sold on eBay for $12,000. I heard over the weekend there was at least one that sold for $31,000 private deal. And I heard of another an one. Eight? An eight? Yeah. I heard of, I heard about 
a lot of really high things. I saw on eBay as well. There was a red cheeks that went for over 10,000. That car was sitting at around 7,500 for like a month or two there. Um, and yeah, I think we just saw the effects of that and that news getting out to a wider audience and always have to be careful with how realistic those sales actually are, making sure things get paid, et cetera. But it seems like everything's heating up. I know I was on the prowl for team rocket packs this weekend and I couldn't get one. My life depended on it. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of selling of the base set happening. And then the other sets are now starting to get hoarded a little bit. You know, it really, it really, when I think about it and I feel like anytime we've now seen over the last call it eight months since early pandemic, obviously the demand that came in, it was happening before. I mean, the run up to the holidays last year, but any it feels like any stone that gets unturned that has juice that then the supply is low, there becomes so much pressure in it. A I mean, big run. like the, the reason being is because even on the, like a first edition eight, the pop on a Charizard it's like is like 30 something. Yeah. It's, it's low. Yeah. There's like, like incredibly there, low. There's only, 200 other to no, like 250 higher grade or something like that i can look. there's 550 last time we had this conversation when i looked from the nines there's 551 nines first editions I, yeah first edition shadow was, okay, so was 551 like higher than because there's like 120 on the uh 10 jason jason can you pull up the uh charizard canterran acl image real quick while you're back there can you uh, just charizard that over first to edition me? 10s there's 120 there's 645 nines yeah. So, Todd, Lou, you guys are the Pokemon experts on this. Let me ask you this then. With the sales, with the way the market is now, mm-hmm. if you have to predict the future, next year's 25th anniversary, we've talked about that a lot on the show. Next year, one year from now, are those cards higher or lower? I don't think they'll be lower. I don't yeah, think they'll I be think, lower. I think what we're in for here is a lot like what we saw with vintage basketball. I think there's going to be a run up here that happens uh, with the first editions um, and the shadowless as well. And then I think there'll be a correction because that's just unavoidable when things run up this high, this fast. Uh, and like we've been talking about with basketball, like with everything, it's just the way it goes. These cards run up. And then- but any Charizard, honestly, first edition Charizard, any first edition Pokemon, I don't think you'll see a 25% correction. I think you'll see a firm plateau. They are so much like, it Supply. just doesn't it just doesn't feel like a card that people are gonna dump for profits. It yeah, doesn't buy is just so much lower. Yeah, that's what I mean. It doesn't feel like someone's coming in at a number, even maybe 20 on a PSA first edition Charizard. It doesn't feel like that that person for that supply is dumping at 16. It just like we talked about it with basketball. It's like Luca, there's twelve thousand there's there's what twelve thousand Luca tens. I yeah. mean, there's not even what Oh, 1500 eight nines and ten charizard first editions yeah and uh, <clears throat> i mean just think about charizard compared to luca in terms of yeah it's not even close collectability the, like the thing i want to meet and tyler we were just talking about it here and we'll continue to mention it unlimited set is something that i think people need to be careful about what they're doing there uh i think people see it as a lower entry point and they're jumping in it's just when I think yeah. about the unlimited set 1999 Pokemon, what comes to my mind is what people originally said about Pokemon where it was like, don't people just have those in their, in their binders at home? It's like people have unlimited at home. Yeah. And that's where the grading is going to come in. It feels like, um, so calls, I have like a little, whatever statue back there. If it, it feels like, like that is not a numbered piece, like to 80 or something like that. It, it feels like, um, an unlimited Charizard is almost like when an artist blows up and then you can buy their prints at the gift shop for like priced up, but it's not like a true piece of it, a collectibles type piece. Yeah, but a, a re- PSA 10 Charizard shouldn't be $10,000. You're saying it should be, I'm saying that, that like unlimited, anything outside of first edition or shadowless, I think has the ability to come back home a little bit feels like yeah. there's this ripple but if you're sitting on a first edition or or a shadowless to me i mean you just sit on it 
sit on it and be patient unless you want to exit right now because you can take profits and there's run up happening. But that run up, the run up will get capped. I don't think you'll, there's no seasonality. I mean, there's no like trade that's going on. Yeah. It's just as long as it's relevant. Yeah. Right. But, we talk about the- that is to the first edition. That is, you have to remain, you have to think about low pops. Yeah. I, I, we'll see. I think the chars are getting to 250 or whatever it is now. I'll be interested because here's the other part of it, right? It's different where with vintage, because I think about, I think about vintage basketball and what happened was the price has shot up and then a bunch became available and the price went down. I just don't know if the people who are sitting on all of those Charizards and those Blastoises and those Venusaurs are going to let them go, which is what will keep the prices going. Sure, it is ridiculous. Shout out to those that are watching on YouTube. Again, if you guys don't watch, it's typically Friday mornings. The episode drops on 1.37 p.m. on on YouTube, but have a nice pictured uh, picture of a T-shirt we we have uh, mocked up by our, our one of our, our team. Uh, yeah, one of our team members, but it's a uh, Charizard can't say any L- tear an ACL shirt. It's we are not. It's pretty that, sad. Right? We cannot sell this. Yeah, <laughs> council shut us down quick. <laughs> We're gonna get some printed. We'll give away maybe one or two. Tweet us something that's interesting. We got two for sale. Tweet me at Ty Schmidt five at Card Collector two at Lujanu. Yeah, not not, not for sale. For Tyler said sale. two for sale. We don't have two for sale. We don't we have, have any two for to sale. give away. We have two to give away. Two to give away. Nothing for sale. But they're yeah. uh, again, if you're if you're not watching, I encourage you to watch it because it's a uh, it's a really 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 cool shirt. I cannot wait to to rock one of those. Yeah. So yeah. So I think just Pokemon is just something to keep an eye on here. Um, I am now looking out for what's coming next in the Pokemon world. To me, I I still think the 95, 96, 97 is what's coming up here um and then there'll be the secondary english sets the 2000 team rocket the 2000 gym challenge gym heroes um what comes out of that group will be interesting go ahead right any thoughts on again i got into one of those a while back but the 2002 legendary collection reverse i don't th- this is a p- potentially my ignorance someone will comment and let me know but like I don't know. It's the same thing. People get excited about Evolutions, which came out in 2016, which has reprints of the original one. That card exploded. I don't see how that's a thing. It doesn't make sense. It just looks a lot like the original one without the original price. You just buy the 99. Because you can't, not everybody, that's the big thing. It's the same thing with cards now, right? You you can't afford it. The price is caught up, so it doesn't make sense. I mean, what's a 2016 Evolutions Charizard cost? I'll let you know. Let's keep talking. 50 bucks? Mm. I think original is still going to cost you 200. I think that's the biggest discrepancy, just cost of entry. Not everybody can afford a $200 one. Some people can afford a $50 one. It's like, you know, I was buying LeBron Topps rookies for PSA 9s at the end of January for $160 a piece because the LeBron Topps Chrome got so big. It just eventually, the second or third best thing starts to sell for more because mm-hmm. the average, you know, card collector can't afford the main one. They just get they just get priced out of, you know. On the run-up. Yeah, they just get priced out. Yeah, but that's the that gets into like the chasing thing, which I don't think that's the best idea either sure i'm not saying i i'm not saying i disagree with that yeah a, a raw evolutions charizard sold for 225 holy cow right so that's what i'm saying yeah that's a lot i've got a a base set at psa right now that i think comes back in eight uh, charizard? charizard yeah nice I remember buying them again last year just because I thought they were cool because I collected them when I was a kid just to keep them. And I've got a couple fives, a six, a seven, and then a nine I bought earlier this year. And it just, it's crazy to see where they're at. I also have a Shadowless five. It's not a first edition, but first edition nines were an under $10,000 card like four months ago. And I turned down one. <laughs> I'll never forget. On um, we go. Never um, forget. On we go. Yep. All right. So. Ty, I'm going to probably kick it over to you on this one. I know this is an, this is something you've been wanting to discuss for a while. We've hinted at it uh, on the show for quite some time, but just really getting into what is National Treasures, right? This is a big, big brand for basketball and football. It is probably one of, if not the premier brand, right? Flawless will sell for more just price per box, a lot more of a limited pr- release with Flawless. Just It's just exclusivity it's it's higher end 
but National Treasures is a, a the high end popular product for for most card collectors. It's in basketball, it's in football. Baseball has an unlicensed version, but um, pretty big set. So Ty, uh, I'll let you take it. Yeah. Here. So we we started getting into this. Um, really, there's obviously been some record breaking sales this year, and and how that shines a light on cards and card collecting and LeBron makes comments. His card goes off crazy. Uh, Giannis or Giannis card goes off crazy. You know, you're talking over $1 million card graded to a, not, not even to a 10. We talk on here a lot in the hyperbole. We talk, we say only people buy PSA 10 <laughs> and then a $1.8 million card goes for a BGS nine. And wasn't the so, trout also a nine too? I believe so. And so we just said, hey, we, we penned a little article on 1.37 p.m. addressing what is National Treasures? What are some of these products that are drawing these dollar amounts? Why? And educate a little bit on the history of them. Because even now, there's definitely been an increase in, in price, obviously, with the rest of the market, as well as the hype around the product. Because you can't tell me that once those things start happening, your people are even doubling down on their gambling. Talk about the futures market in sports betting, which has its own secondary market now. Big time math quant game in terms of over-unders, MVP bets. Talk about buying national treasures cards as their rookies in early guys. As like a high risk, high reward, eight thousand dollar, you know, rookie national treasure of ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So we just got into that a little bit. We started talking. So the two main products are football and basketball. Is this correct, Ryan? Yeah. National treasures. They come out. They sell them in packs of ten cards. Yeah, it's typically ten cards, one box, four boxes per case, and a box. Was this last year averaging around four thousand dollars? If I'm correct, for basketball, yeah, yeah, four grand. So four grand box for ten cards. Yep, sixty in, sixteen thousand dollars for forty cards. And in that, you were pretty much get, given a couple hits in terms of autos. One rookie patch auto, which specifically is like the card. You're not guaranteed one per box. One Ideally, if you hit one per case, that was a good, that was a good. A rookie patch auto. Yeah, a true rookie patch auto, the most desirable one of all of them. And the most desirable one of all of them is a rookie patch auto, and that has a game-worn patch. I don't believe National Treasures is game-worn. Typically, in the past, the only rookie patch autograph that is game-worn comes in flawless. Got it. So this might be what they call player worn, which is like photo shoot worn. Correct. Put it on, take a couple dunks, take a couple pictures, yep. that kind of thing. And they cut that up. They put that into the card. The most desirable national treasures is really an of 99. And then you can get some variants of 23 of five, of maybe 25, and a one on one. Uh, it's it's there's a first off the line one that's like out of three or out of like 20 it don't quote me, out of 30 this year i think and then you have a true rpa at a 99 you have an out of 25 you had an out of 10 a 101 and then i think you have an out of five got it and y- you guys have always kind of said to me um look at the of 99 part correct yeah yeah absolutely so I am just going to uh, pull up one of my favorite guys in the league right now, a Michael Porter Jr. 2018-19 RPA of 99. And what we've got here, Yola's price. I'm thinking the same I thing. I can't believe that, and that not not against my MPJ, like just the fact that that's where it is is crazy. I remember uh, Ty. I would love for you to look up when you get a second, Dylan Windler. Dylan Windler. Look so, at Dylan Windler National Treasures. What we've got here is we've got a uh, of and another thing before we get off the topic as we're just going specific. The next kind of thing is okay, you've got your numbered. You always want to take a look at the auto, has the auto, has the quality of the auto. 
Does it you go know, off the car? Off is the it car. streaky? Is it faded? Is yep. it bubbly? Those kinds of things. Because National Treasure is true on card auto, correct? Correct. Then the next thing you're going to look at is the patch. And there's typically premiums for three colors, what they call a tri color patch. Right. You want to talk a little bit about three colors versus two colors versus kind of one color? Yeah. I, I'm. I mean, if when you see the patch again, if the nicer it looks out to, to you, and the more it stands out to you, the more desirable it's going to stand out to somebody else, right? Tyler's got a picture up here of a nice three-color patch with, you know, multi breaks, meaning the patch color switches. You know, it's typically a number piece or a, a piece of the the name, something like that. The, the nicer patches always bring a premium compared to, you know, a, a plain white jersey or a plain blue jersey or whatever the color may be. Yep. So you wanted me to take a, so, okay. Let, now let's do some bad examples here for a second. So this is a national treasure. This is just a rookie patch, not a rookie mm -hmm. patch auto that we're showing here. You can see that there were some things that were called like crossovers. If I recall, that was one thing when I was looking at some one day, you guys both kind of hit me with a, they're in text. football this year. They're not like, in basketball. Look, okay. And what are no, those just kind of side by side? Not yet, I don't think. So in football, they, no, the football, it was like a, it was a nap in football, 2019 football with Metcalf, Kyler, Haskins. They did a crossover RPA, which is the same design they used for 2009, 2010 National Treasures basketball. So Steph Curry's rookie year, they took that design and put football players on it and put it in football with Kyler's class. So you could pull a Kyler Murray crossover patch auto which is a kyler patch auto with a with the same design they used for steph curry so basically 10 years later got it so i think the crossover comes from crossing over between sports as what i'm going to assume it where it comes from like that and then talk to me a little bit because i've received this advice from you i've passed it on to others that have asked me about booklets they're cool if you're collecting them i enjoy displaying them because they're nice that kind of thing Typically, resale value on booklets isn't as popular. They're harder to display, harder to ship. They're just, they're the mark. Again, I don't make the rules, just the market has said booklets aren't, aren't, aren't our thing. Got it. Makes sense. And so, you wanted but, me to take a look at who? Yeah, keep everything up there except for change Michael Porter Jr. to Dylan Windler. And that's D I L L O N? D Y, no, D Y L A N. Windler, W-I-N-D-L-E-R. Yep. So I think uh, get rid of uh, RPA, Tyler, and just put auto. Uh, scroll down. Check, check sold listings. See if there's any listed. Right there. So I think this is kind of the big thing that I that I take away from National Treasures is the cost of entry. And this is why this brand does what it is. And this is why the Giannis and the bigger cards sell for what they are is the cost of entry on these cards now is absurd, right? So this sold for $588 or best offer. So somewhere less than that, yeah. but Dylan Windler did, I don't believe again, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure somebody will. I don't think Dylan Windler played a single game last year, not one game. Yeah. And you're no talking about six hundred dollars. No I couldn't spell his first name if I tried. He couldn't yeah. even spell his first name. It was the third guy the Cavs took last year. He's a guard, played at a smaller school. I remember where, uh, it's a smaller school, but again, four hundred dollars for a patch auto. Like I remember when Anthony Davis was a rookie. And somebody told me this the other day that they were buying Anthony Davis rookie patch autographs for around a thousand dollars. Yeah. Like, that Michael Porter Jr. was to be had at nine grand seven fifty. Yeah. So again, that's just that's the biggest thing now is just the, the the cost of entry for even the lesser players. Guys, you don't even know and you I can't even Belmont. Belmont, there you go. You can't even spell his name. Guy had a Probably double a double in the guy. tournament. Probably Didn't a even play a game. Guy. So th that that really just speaks to the national treasures brand. And again, it just compared to a prism rookie auto or a prism base rookie or a select auto supply and demand. There are 99 rookie patch autographs. How many people want one? 
That, that's all it's going to come down to. The most desirable RPA of one particular person has 99 total cards and a lot of guys that want them. It's no different than the Pokemon argument. There's just not an infinite supply of them. That's why that will always reign true. That brand, right, is just that's what people want. Now, maybe in the in the future, it switches to flawless because they're game used or immaculate because they're cheaper and they're at a 99. We don't know. But right now, the National Treasures brand, those patch autos, that's what everybody wants. Which Pokemon would you compare Dylan Windler to if you had a I would compare. One I don't know. Right, but if you had to. Um I would compare Dylan Windler to maybe like a polywag. Mm, interesting. Hollow. No, isn't the polywhirl hollow? Mm, that's a good job by you. Yeah, I feel like the polywag is just <laughs> not some, someone you're thinking about on a daily basis. It's a, it's a Clefairy. He's the Clefairy doll yeah. of 2019. It, it, it sounds like it. It feels <laughs> like it. Hey, Ty, Lou, anything else you want to take away from this this argument or this debate? No. No, I feel good. Other than that, it's footy season, baby. It's full-on footy season. It's going to be 20 people watching <laughs> every week. Champions League starts tomorrow. Well, Halachi and Bappe cards. We still have uh, new releases. Oh, yeah. I'm aware. I just wanted to throw that out there before we got into that. Cool. But that, but Ty, you, you bring up footy. I, Lou, I know you're a huge, huge soccer fan. Um, but that 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 would actually, I mean, I'm not sure it'll happen. I'm not sure if it does happen, it would be soon. But rookie patch autos from National Treasure in soccer would be massive completely agree so a couple things i won't say who i spoke to but i spoke to somebody i won't say what brand they work at but they work at one of the main brands <clears throat> and i inquired about he coughed i was waiting for him to say that. um <laughs> Kylian and Mbappe putting an autograph on a card one time for us fans out here and they confirmed that it's coming so i feel good about it i well, have that's, heard that's breaking news on card talk. Yeah, I have yeah. heard the asking price for what he wants is out of this world. It feels like they're going to package it into a super premium product and give the fans what they deserve and want. It wow. would be huge. I mean, that, that's big news that Tyler almost didn't bring up ever. And he was going to just keep that in the tuck. Uh, he didn't even I, tell us. This is the first time we're hearing only about here this. here on card talk. Will you find information like that? Yeah, I honestly never told anyone until right now. That would be because I pressed. I pressed. Interesting. That's I said, what's going interesting on? Interesting. Are we getting serious Mbappe question. autos? Serious question. Yeah. Basketball flawless this year is fourteen thousand a case online is what one of the online dis- uh, dealers has it for thirteen ninety nine right? That's seven thousand dollars a box. Mm-hmm. How many cards? Ten mm-hmm. per box. Okay. They do the same thing for soccer. Mm-hmm. Ten cards a box. Mbappe has autos. What would it sell for a box? More or less? It's, I would say 20 to 25% less. I think 20 to 25%. You think it would sell for more less. than football? Is that what? I'm not sure what. Uh, football is not out. It's not coming. It doesn't come out for a while. So I have no idea. But I would imagine football this year compared to basketball is probably looking at somewhere. I think somewhere it's probably right in line. Football is right probably going to be closer to about thirty two hundred to thirty six hundred a box. Yeah, I think it's right in line. Maybe a little bit more. I just, if you yeah. get Mbappe, if they sneak a Ronaldo or Messi on there, some up and coming stars, Sancho, Ansu Fati. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say up. a lot of the younger guys, Fati, like yeah. Mason Mount, like Son, a lot of the guys. Son is like going to have a real twelve months. Who's Mason Mount? Mason Mount's a young kid for Chelsea, Chelsea. English boy. Hmm. Debatable at best. What Brian about uh, Reyna? Gio Reyna, a little overpriced. American kid, though. Father was I mean, an American like, legend, if, Claudia. I'm not the biggest soccer guy. I, I like soccer yeah. and I, I would love it. But like, if they had Holland, Mbappe, Reyna, Pulisic, Patch, Autos. Yeah. That would be They it. will. They will. That would be and, and you're not naming a lot of guys like that would Rashford, be Greenwood, Ansu Fati. <laughs> Yeah. 
It would be a serious product. It would be more than football. It would be five. That's serious product. Flawless soccer. If those guys were in it, if all those guys were in it, five grand a box. Huge. I agree. It's coming. We got to get some mock-ups of that gun. Jason? Uh, some. What would it look like if we took the 1920 National Treasures basketball design and put it on those the upcoming soccer stars? Jason, let's hit our boy Go On Volt. See if he wants to work. He stopped by my shop the other day. He's a Columbus boy? Is he an no, Ohio he State lives, fan? In, lives in Cincinnati. I don't want to give out too yeah. much of his details. Got he, it, fair. Yeah, he's, what's the social security number, He Brian? docks the guy. I, I don't know that, but he was driving from Cleveland to Cincinnati and stopped by my shop, and I got to meet him the other day. He does great work. Great work. Yeah, great I got work. to meet him and talk to him about some of his stuff. He's Y'all y'all should make sure you check him out. He does some some crazy stuff. Yeah, he does. He's I'm got a Trevor Lawrence one that, that's that been trending. It's Trevor Lawrence in a prism card. He did a card for Lefko. He did a card of J. Cole and Flawless Design. It was really cool. Here, we'll just give him some love real quick. Or here. There you go. Wow, big plug. Right there. There it is. Trevor nice Lawrence Prism. Oh, he did the booger. I, I yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He did the booger. He did this little Luca piece. Booga. A booga. Yeah, I mean, I've had some conversations with him. He does a good work. He's good people. But yeah, this is this is that flawless. It's that J. Cole flawless. Yeah, we'll see if we can get a little something going. A little footy footy mock-ups. Shout out the boy. Go on, Volt. Cool. Take us away, Rye. New release. Yep. So last one this week is going to be, or for this week's episode, is going to be new releases. So we've got, I'll go through them real quick and then we'll discuss each of them. You've got Contenders, Draft Picks, Basketball 2020, 2021. You've got Encased Basketball 1920. You've got 2020 XR Football. And then you've got 1920 Museum Collection UEFA Champions League Soccer. It also says Pokemon Champions Path Hatterene. Don't know mm-hmm. as much about it. Um, and then uh, t- Friday says TriStar Hidden Treasures Mini Helmets. And that's it for this week. A uh, couple of big things, right? 19 or 2020, 2021 basketball contenders draft picks. We talked about this on last episode as we talked about guys to look, uh, look into for the upcoming season. One of the things I mentioned was you're going to have a lot of the younger guys that most people don't know about, right? We didn't get March madness. So you don't know that, Hey, this guy on this small school, AKA Dylan Windler is any good because nobody's ever seen him. Um, so I think the 2020, 2021 stuff has potential if you know a guy, hey, this guy I think is going to be good. This guy's going to be good. Maybe pick up some stuff. Um, so I think that's got potential. It may have potential if summer league starts soon, but we'll, we'll talk about this before. Contenders draft picks on the scale from you know all the pro- when all the products come out, it's going to be on the low end in the long run. It's not going to hold much value in Prism and Optic and Select and those products come out. But for now, if you know one guy has a big game in summer league and doesn't have any cards, this is probably going to be that opportunity. Then you've got Encased, uh, XR. Any any thoughts from you two on either of those? Encased is weird. I'm not... like It's it's one of these things that when I first got back into cards, like I was like, I liked in- the idea of Encased. But then I get the card, I open the box, and it's like... Can you boys go it. in for, for a second on what is Encased? So it's got... Like one pack in the box typically, and it's got like four. Again, I, I don't, I can pull it up, but typically in the past, it's been like four, four cards in like an individual pack, like being one base or parallel, one base or parallel card, and then an auto, a jersey, and then either another auto or another jersey. And, and then, these are graded cards? No, that's an individual four card pack. This is how football was last year. That's the reason I know this. And then there's one encased card. That's already graded by Beckett. Tells you what it per box. One graded card per box. This is how it was again. I'll pull it up for this year, but that's how it was last year. It was four and hits. Usually nine fives, right? No, you can get eight fives. You get nines. You get tens. You can get black really? labels. Yeah, you can get all sorts of things. I've never seen a black label come out of that before. So I'll show you a picture. Yeah, it's just a. It's a. The cards are cool, but it just goes back to the thing where. I'm not getting into the Beckett thing again, but like, it, I don't love the way those cards look. And it's like, I'm going to pay $600 for a box. I'm not getting that far. Up it's that. one pack per box. So same thing. Five cards per pack. Like I said, you get one aut- graded autograph, one additional autograph, 
two memorabilia cards. So one of those will come in a Beckett slab. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't do it for me personally. It's just not. But on the again, realm we talk about it like for me. You, you, we talk about it before. The market wants graded cards. This is the this is the companies paying attention to what people want, right? Like you're not wrong. Everybody, you know, we, we see a lot of people. We talk about it on the show before. People want graded cards, so this is companies paying attention to what the market wants. And, and, and putting graded cards in a product. They're doing the work for you. Hey, you want a Zion 9510 Auto? Here you go. You don't have to grade it. We're saving you the time, the money. You just get it in a pack. Yeah. Right? I, I get it. I get it's it. It's creative. It is. I like the iteration. I, I like what they're doing there. Ty, any thoughts before we go? Museum, collection, UEFA, uh, Champions League? Museum's nice. I haven't. I, I we opened Lou. Do you remember we opened a bunch yeah. of Bundesliga uh, museum collection? Mm-hmm. I have a nice Marco Royce. Um, there's good hits in there. It's an interesting product. There hasn't been much of a market though. I haven't seen much. You know, it's one Champions auto. League, so you're gonna get a lot of different, um, you know, leagues, different players. There's a lot in there. You'll you'll get some good hits. It doesn't feel like there's a, a demand for much of just either the base cards or it's a different design. The design it feels a little old school. It feels a little like it's old got like a premium space feel without actually being yeah. premium. Yeah. Yeah. It's got one pack per box, eight cards per pack, one auto relic, one autograph, and one relic card per box. So yeah. three hits per box. It's currently pre selling at about three forty five a box. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like high risk, high reward. Like there's exactly. Like it's also got Messi. Market. It's got Holland. It's got uh, uh-huh. Felice. It's got Lewandowski. Remember, can we get a one of one out of the first pack we opened, Ty? Yeah, we did. Actually, <laughs> yeah. oh my god, we did. Yeah, we we ripped a good amount of museum actually. Yeah, we did. All right. All right. So that is going to do it for this week's episode of Car Talk. As always, if you guys want to discuss anything on the show, feel free to reach out to us. You can email us at cartalkpod at gmail.com or hit us up on IG. Yeah, to that note, let's do this. If you've listened all the way through this episode, tweet us. Tweet us. We've said our Twitters a couple times. We won't repeat them. Tweet us. Let us know what your favorite pickup from this week was, and we're going to give away two Card Talk Pod mats. So I don't even have one. Two, of shir- two shirts and two Card Talk Pod one. mats going out this week. When did we get Card Talk? The- when did we get Car Talk mats? Card Talk. Break- I mean, you. you I You're going to give away these Charge Our T-shirts, and I'm not even going to get one. Lou and I are just sitting here like struggling, like we're giving away shit we don't even have. Like I said, the Tyler Show propaganda machine strikes again. That's because we're giving the fans what they Who's want. Who's we? You got a mouse in your pocket? Uh, <laughs> Us all together. You all see what I got to deal with? I'm just trying to do something for y'all. And getting- Bro, there ain't no y'all in this. Rush. This is oh, loose, man. right, man? This is the Tyler propaganda. Oh, oh my God. Keep it moving. All right, all right, guys. Car Talk Pod on IG. But that's all we got for this one, guys. Peace. Peace.